Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to install Windows 11 on an unsupported device. So if you see something like this when you try to install it, don't worry, we're gonna go over what did work and what isn't gonna work for you right after this. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about how to install Windows 11 on an unsupported PC. Whether that be not having the proper CPU, not having uh, TPM 2.0, or any of the other system requirements for Windows 11. So I've tried a couple of the registry hacks that are uh, posted online. One was on majorgeeks.com, and that was uh, adding a lab config folder to the system registry. That did not work. And then you could see here me doing another one that was posted online where you're actually adding a Mo setup folder to the registry. Um, neither of those worked and I'll show that here after I did both of the registry uh, hacks, I received the same result. So we're gonna talk about what did work and what you need to do in order to install Windows 11 on an unsupported PC. Some of the items you guys are gonna need is a USB flash drive that is eight gig in capacity or higher, a copy of the Windows 11 ISO file, which we're gonna cover in just a second, and then you're also gonna need an application called Rufus, which we'll use to actually put the ISO file on the flash drive. And then just so you know, if we continue with these steps, you will need to erase your hard drive in order for this to work, so please back up all of your data. Okay, so now we're going to jump over to the Microsoft website that you need to download the Windows 11 ISO. I'm going to put the link for this down in the description below. We're going to focus on download Windows 11 disk image. We're going to select Windows 11 multi-edition ISO and select download, and that's going to prompt us to select our product language. So for me, I'm going to select English and then confirm, and then it should give you another prompt where you can select to download Windows 11 English 64-bit. Yours may be different if you selected a different language, but once you click this blue button, it should start downloading the ISO file for you. Alternatively, uh, the next application we're gonna download, Rufus, does have a download option for the Windows 11 ISO if you wish to do that instead of coming to this website. And I'll show you that in just a second. To download the Rufus application, we're gonna jump over to their website. I'm gonna make sure I throw the link in the description below for you guys, but it is R-U-F-U-S dot I-E, and that's gonna load up their website. We're gonna scroll down to the download section, and we're gonna click on the link that says Rufus 3.17, which is gonna be the latest version. So once we click that link, I'm gonna close this app real quick. And then that should download the file. And there we go. After you have the Rufus file downloaded, you can go ahead and open it up. And this is what the application should look like. In the device section at the top, make sure you select your USB flash drive. So if you've not already plugged that into your computer, uh, please do so now. In the second part where it says boot selection, you have the option to click select or download. And this is where you can either pick the file that you've already downloaded or you can have the Rufus application go ahead and download the Windows 11 ISO for you, which we'll walk through here uh, for those of you that wish to do that. So you can see here we picked Windows 11. We can select the newest version of the ISO file, select continue, select our edition, select continue, and then make sure you're picking your language. Once you've selected the proper language and you select continue, it should prompt you to uh, download or save the ISO file and as you can see here it's the exact same file that we actually already downloaded off of the Microsoft website so for me I'm not going to uh, re-download this I'm just going to use the file that we've already downloaded since it's the same in the next section under image option we want to make sure that we're selecting on here and we pick extended Windows 11 installation, no TPM and no secure boot. This is what's gonna patch the ISO file to work on your unsupported systems. Moving on to the next section where it says partition scheme, you have two options, GPT and MBR. And without going into a long history lesson over what the differences are, just note that when we select MBR, the next option where it says a target system 
changes from UEFI to BIOS. So there are a couple of different ways which we can figure out what your computer has. Um, if your computer is unsupporting to the installation of Windows 11, um, you have a very good probability that you're going to need the MBR partition scheme, but um, you should always verify. So there are a couple of ways to check this. If you're running Windows 10, we can go down to the search bar and you can type in system information. This should populate a box where we can look at the BIOS mode. If your BIOS mode looks like this and it says legacy, then that more than likely means that you need the master boot record option for your partition scheme. The other way to look this up is to go back down to the search bar and type in disk management, open that up, and then we're going to right click on the drive in which you want to install Windows 11. So, and then we'll go to properties. And then in this dialog box, we wanna to go to the volumes tab. And here you see partition style and it shows master boot record. So that's what I'm gonna be going with for the purpose of this video today. Moving back over to Rufus, you'll see that now we have all of our settings set. All we have to do is click start. You'll get a prompt that warns you that everything on your USB flash drive will be erased if we continue. Um, so make sure that you, you're not using a flash drive that has any data on it that you want saved. Click OK, and then it's going to go ahead and start writing the ISO file to the flash drive. And I'm not going to make you uh, watch this entire process, so we're going to speed a little bit of it up, and we'll be right back. And we're back. And so now the next thing you can do is close out Rufus. And I just want to make certain that you're aware that if we continue past this point, everything on your hard drive will be wiped. So please back up any data that you wish to keep. Um, you're going to want to keep the USB drive in your computer, and then we're going to go ahead and restart it. But again, uh, if you continue with this process, everything on your computer will be lost if you have not backed it up uh, to another drive or flash drive or uh, some other means that's not on the primary drive in which you want to install Windows 11. So once we reboot our computer, you're going to want to select the option to boot from your USB flash drive. If you're not seeing a screen like this, you might have to press delete or F10 to get it to come up. Um, if that doesn't work, uh, your computer is going to be different than mine, obviously. You're going to need to go into your BIOS settings and change your boot order. And I'm not going to be able to show you that because everybody's computer is different, so you, you'd have to just look it up. Once we boot from our flash drive, you're going to be brought to the... Uh, Windows installation screen that you see here. And so we're just going to continue through this setup process just to show you uh, what it looks like. For the product key, I just clicked don't have a product key. And then you want to make sure that you're selecting the exact same copy of Windows um, 11 that you had for Windows 10. So if you had Windows 10 Pro, then you're going to select Windows 11 Pro. Um, same thing if you had Home, then you'd select Home. And just to show you real quick, you cannot upgrade from the USB media that we're booting from. You can only do what we're seeing here, which is a fresh installation. <clears throat> so for me, I'm going to go ahead and wipe my hard drive. So I'm going to delete every single one of these partitions, and then I'm going to reformat the drive. And I just want to reiterate that this is the step that's going to erase everything on your hard drive. So when you click delete on this, you're going to get a little prompt that tells you that you're going to lose everything. And so for me, that's okay. I've already backed up all the data on this machine, but you just want to make sure that there's nothing on this drive that you want to lose. Also, if you have more than one hard drive in your computer, you're going to want to make sure that you're selecting the correct drive because you might not have a list of partitions uh, like I have here. After you delete all the partitions, you'll need to create a new one. So I clicked the new. I left the size amount, uh, the pre-populated number. I did not change it. I clicked apply, and then that created my new partitions. And then from there, we clicked format and formatted them. Once that's done, you can go ahead and click next, and it's going to start installing Windows 11. So we'll speed this up, and we'll be back when we're done.
All right, and we're back, and we got Windows 11 finally installed, and I just want to show you real quick uh, that there was no trickery in any of this. We're going to bring up system information and show you this is the same computer. Um, we're still running an unsupported secure boot state. Uh, nothing has changed here, and, um, and then I'll show you that if you log in to your, uh, the same account that you were logged into for Windows 10, so your Microsoft account, um, that you should, at least in my case, uh, Windows was already pre-activated even though we did not put a key in earlier. Now, this was just my experience. I don't know if Microsoft will change this or patch it in the future, but it looks like my Windows 10 key was uh, automatically upgraded to Windows 11 without any issues, and I didn't have to do anything for that. It seems to be an automatic process. And sorry, my, my drivers are installing since we just installed Windows and things are updating. So it looks like my resolution just changed on you guys. Okay, so once you get the control panel open, I'm gonna bring up system and look at the information on this specific computer. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look at our Windows version. You can see we have Windows 11 Pro. I had Windows 10 Pro before upgrading. And then we click on our product information. You can see there that we are activated despite not putting that code in. And I believe that is because Microsoft has switched to having your uh, your keys linked to your Microsoft account. So as long as you guys are signing in with the same account, you should be okay. So that's it for this one, guys. Let me know in the comments how this went for you, if you ran into any different issues or if maybe things have changed. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe the video. Peace.